PhD. I'm teaching two courses right now in the Department of Philosophy. One very big one, Business Ethics, which I've taught twice before. A smaller one, 50 people in the intro to philosophy. And I'm sort of here to focus on how to engage with your class because this is one of the hardest things to do as a new instructor. And one of the ways that uh, I do this most effectively is by using some technology known as an eye clicker. And this is just one of very many types, but at Waterloo, this is sort of the technology that we decided to go with. So on your tables right now, you each have a clicker. So I'd like you to all just press the on button and it should, a light should come on. Okay. And then once you've done that, can you hold down the on off button until it starts blinking? And once it starts blinking, press B twice. And then the light should go green. So, uh, I'm going to close up. So, I've been asked to sort of figure out who you are, okay? So, right now, tell me who you are. Which one of these best describes who you are right now? Now, one of the great things about clickers is you can change your vote if you think you screwed up, right? You're not committed. I'm waiting for one more, right? There should be ten. Everyone press the button. There we go. So basically what I do is I open the poll by pressing this button, I wait until you vote, then I stop it, and then I get to show you the handy dandy graph. So two of you are MA students, five of you are PhD candidates who have not taught, or are not teaching right now, I guess. Two of you are PhD students who have taught, and one's an other. Who's the other? What, are, what other are you? Well, I have a PhD and I'm not teaching right now, so I don't actually fit in any of those categories. Well, I suppose you might be a C or have I'm not, taught. I'm not a student. Um, okay. You win. <laughs> okay. So what are some of the benefits of clickers? There are a whole bunch. There's lots of research on this. But uh, one of the main benefits is attention. So our attention wanes over time. We don't have very long attention spans. Studies have shown that typically for students, we can hope at best to keep their attention about five minutes at a time before they turn back to Twitter and Facebook and watching squirrels water skiing. I've seen all these things. Now what you get to do by using clicker questions every five minutes or so is to keep their attention on the course. Okay? Uh, another benefit is engagement. Now, this is what I want to talk about today is it's a way for you to keep the class interested in what you're talking about. It's a way to keep them interested in what's going on in the course rather than elsewhere. Okay. Now, you also get participation. And clickers work in every size of course, from <coughs> sort of 20, 30 students all the way up to the massive 200 plus. Right now, I teach one with 130 students. And clickers really, really shine for participation in big lectures because if you want to get a discussion going or sort of know what, uh, what's going on in, with your students, it's very hard to sort of count hands, it's hard to get everyone to uh, have a chance to sort of give their say, so by using clickers you get to do this quickly, right, for a lot of people. And you also get participation from people who aren't as inclined to put up their hand and say something, right, this gives shy people a way to participate, which is great. And clickers are fun for students, so there are lots of ways to make clickers fun, one is to sort of have fun voting options. So I asked one of my classes, okay, do you want to do a class-wide debate? Yes, no, or I just came here to sleep, which is true of some people. So you get to have some fun with it. Clickers increase attendance. So uh, in my courses, it's a night three-hour class with 130 students. I typically have over 90% attendance every lecture. Okay. And it's business ethics. <laughs> All right, over 90%. Now, part of that's because of clickers, part of that's because I'm amazing, but hey. <laughs> it encourages students to attend because this is a participation grade, right? You're giving them marks for participating, so they're inclined to come. And you get to evaluate them. So you can ask merely participation style questions, or you can ask them qu uh, questions that have right or wrong answers. You can attach grades to that if you want. I don't because it just gets messy. Uh, but you can still evaluate their understanding on the fly, right? You can see, okay, I ask a question, there's a right and wrong answer. 
they got it wrong, we need to stop, I need to explain this more. So this is a way to sort of gauge whether they're understanding or not. And finally, the most important reason, learning. With clickers, students learn more. Right? There's a lot of data to support this. And they learn more because of all these reasons. Okay. What is over here? Now, students love clickers. So I've asked them what they think about their, or my use of clickers in the courses. And these are all positive views. And these are massively positive views. Moreover, I asked them if they would uh, take another course if they use clickers. And again, the uh, overwhelming amount of people said probably yes or definitely yes. Right? They enjoy using clickers. Uh, in terms of logistics, these are not expensive. They're about $45 each. You can buy them used. And students can use the same clicker for their entire university career. Right? They don't have to buy one for each class. They can take it from class to class. So the more classes use this technology, the sort of cheaper it is per course for these students. And here at Waterloo, they get a refund of something like $20 when they give it back uh, to the bookstore. The technology is quite easy to set up, and even when things go massively wrong like they did today, it doesn't take that long to fix it. You can, um, I highly encourage attaching some grade to the use of clickers to incentivize students to use them. The typical suggestion is between 5 and 15 percent. You don't want to go more because that sort of incentivizes cheating, right? People bringing multiple clickers, which is a form of academic uh, it's a integrity violation. But you don't want to make it too small. So I tend to sort of lean on the 10 to 15 percent. And it's imperative that you use them frequently, every single lecture and multiple times per lecture, right? They want to sort of get value from using them. And you want to get the value, the teaching value, of using them frequently. Okay? So what are some of the uses you can use? How much time do I have? I don't even know when I started that. Eight no, minutes? No. Eight minutes left. Okay. One neat thing you can do with clickers is use them for setting classroom policies. Because most students aren't usually willing to voice what might be an unpopular position, even if that's how they feel. So because clickers are anonymous, at least to other students, uh, you can ask them questions about policy. So in one course, I had a laptop policy, which I underestimated how many people had laptops. So I asked them, hey, should we keep it or remove it? I asked them this verbally, and overwhelmingly people said remove it. I then asked the clicker question, and almost half wanted to keep it. So we kept it. Okay. So that's one interesting use for clickers. Another is some of us are in social sciences, uh, others in sort of the humanities. You might be surprised to know that even philosophers do experiments. And so if you're doing a data course or you're doing critical thinking or whatever you're doing, you can run experiments and get quick data using clickers. So I'm not going to go into the details of what's going on in this case, but basically there are two different sort of ethical scenarios that if I tell you these two scenarios in different orders, I can influence your moral intuitions. And so what I do in my very first lecture with 130 people, and it is kick half out within two minutes, give them the one ordering, bring the others in, give them the other ordering, then have them vote with their clickers about what they would have done. And it turns out if I show you this one first, you are more likely to be willing to push this fat guy off to save people <laughs> than if I show the opposite. And so I use this as a fun, quick way to, one, try to replicate this very famous experiment, and two, to motivate the course. Because it's a course on ethics, I have to teach them theory, I want them to know why they should learn theory. Well, because your moral intuitions suck. Right? So this is the way I get to do that, I get to have fun. And I've done this three times and only replicated twice, which is itself some interesting data. Okay, here's a big one. Times for telling, uh, Derek Bruff defines them as moments in a learning experience when students are ready and interested to learn from a lecture or reading. Basically, specific moments where students are just really open to hearing what you have to say and learning, and they tend to happen when students are surprised about being wrong about something. And clickers get to sort of tell you when that happens easily. And the surprise tends to lead to a strong desire to learn. So 
Uh, I did this a few ways. One is about the false consensus effect, which is basically we think other people think the way we do, which turns out false. So they had to do a case study, right, an ethics case study, and I said, what did you argue? And they voted. Then I asked them basically the exact same options, what do you think other people voted? And it perfectly pretty much replicates the results. It's a false consensus effect. People thought other people thought the way they did. So I show them this, and they're shocked, right? Because they thought everyone thought the same way they did. I get to show the diversity, and then I get to explain what the false consensus effect is and why it matters. And they're really open to hearing about it because I've shocked them by being wrong, and that's really well facilitated by the use of clickers. There are other ones I've done. Uh, so I've asked them what the approximate percentage of female professors at Waterloo is. You might be shocked to know it's B, it's around 23%. They were wrong. Then I asked them, uh, how many PhDs each year do you think are women as a percentage? They were way wrong because it's 55%. And they're shocked by this and really open to hearing what's going on. And I use this to sort of talk about why there's a mismatch. Okay. Another great use for clickers is something called peer instruction. So, so far, all the instruction is coming from the instructor. Peer instruction is when students teach each other. So what you do is you post a question, they vote, you don't show them the results yet, then you have them talk to each other about what they thought the right answer is, and if you have enough people who know the right answer, you'll see that the class sort of starts teaching itself the right answer, and you have them re-vote, and you notice that more people got it right. Peer instruction really only works, though, when you have enough people get it right. And it's about between a third and two thirds. And here's what it looks like. So here's the first vote on this question. The right answer is D. Then I had them talk without first showing the results. And then they re-vote and more people get it right. Now, this is a great way to spend 10 minutes of your lecture time by speaking for about 10 seconds, for what it's worth. And it's critical you only ever show the results after the discussions happened and after they voted twice. Because otherwise, they're going to focus in on the most popular answer, even if it's wrong, and then find reasons and that they'll be more wrong. Okay? Now, obviously, we can use clickers to check students' understanding, but here's a more interesting way to use it. Typically, if uh, so, I asked this question and they voted. Uh, you can't quite read it. The, uh, C, the option C is, I don't know what that term means, I need you to explain it. And, uh, what, four, very few people picked it actually, it was 20 people picked it. And so I said, okay class, do you need me to explain this concept? And no one said yes. And so I said, hmm, clicker question, vote A if yes, B if no, and look how many people suddenly wanted me to explain it. So students aren't usually able or willing to verbalize their confusion. Clickers get you past that. I use this all the time now. And in fact, when this happens, I bring this very question up in every class and then tell them to stop being so scared of being wrong because none of you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, how much time do I have? Running out? Yeah. Wrap nope. up. Yeah. That's fine. I'm just going to skip and clear sure that. So, I'm just going to ask one more clicker question. So, do you plan to try clickers in your class? Oops. <clears throat> oh, come on. <laughs> okay, you can see it's just vote. Yes, no, thinking about it. Oops. Stop it. So it's a few yeses. No no's. That's good. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>